All right, I'm in the state of Maine. Behind me is the most controversial body of water in all of Maine. See, that's the hook to get you to keep watching the video. The big controversy is that locals here call this Wilson Lake, and the state of Maine officially calls it Wilson Pond. So pond versus lake, pretty controversial, huh? Anyway, the point of Wilson Lake, as I will call it, is that it's supremely gorgeous and it is the focal point, arguably, I guess obviously, of the town of, not Wilson, but Wilton. The town of Wilton is right over here. So today, in this video, I am going to explore the town of Wilton. People come to Wilton a lot for the hiking and the horse riding and the kayaking and canoeing. There's lots of other lakes around here and a lot of people stay in Wilton to do all that stuff. But the town of Wilton itself is full of interesting and very unusual history. It's very small. There's like one main street and there's a few residential streets around it. So this is my walk around Wilton. From Wilson Lake, Wilson Stream flows out and continues on. And actually way over on the other side of the lake, Wilson Stream flows into it. So it flows into the lake or pond and back out. And it goes through here, right through downtown. And right there is one of the uh, main things about Wilton history. The story of Wilton is that it was first a settlement in the 1700s, like the early 1700s. And in 1803, a guy called Abraham Butterfield from Wilton, New Hampshire came and he paid the requisite fee to incorporate this town and decided since it's his choice, he named it after his hometown, Wilton, New Hampshire, which still exists. So Wilton, Maine came from Wilton, New Hampshire, the name did. In the 1870s, a guy called Bass opened a shoe company here, Bass Shoes. This was the Bass Shoe Factory. Um, I am not a fashion guy or a clothes guy or a shoes guy at all, but even I've heard of Bass Shoes. I must have seen the sign in shoe stores and stuff, but um, I see a Norwegian flag on this house behind me. See, that's one reason I speak so haltingly on these videos. There's so much distractions. Norwegian flag. Anyway, so Bass Shoes used to be based here. They used to be all made here, all in this big factory, which is now still an incredible building, but it's full of little, um, little shops and little uh, services and stuff now. That Bass Shoe Company was so famous that, according to Wikipedia, Charles Lindbergh wore Bass Shoes on his famous uh, flight across the Atlantic in 1927. And Admiral Richard Byrd, who was the uh, guy who explored Antarctica, wore Bass Shoes on those explorations. And this was the factory for Bass Shoes until 1998, when it was bought out by somebody else and operations moved overseas. So this building became other things, but I'm glad it's still here. It's also a Calzolaio Pasta Company. It's an Italian restaurant also. Speaking of the Norwegian flag, maybe this is related. Um, Bass Shoe Company, a lot of its fame came from its shoes that it called Penny Weegens. W-E-E-J-U-N, Weegen. And that comes from the, uh, the word Norwegian because there was like, a, there were slip-on shoes without laces which was believed to be uh, derived from some kind of Norwegian shoe, Norwegian style. So Penny Weegens became a big seller, the big, big seller for Bass Shoes and revolutionized the shoe industry, apparently. You can walk behind the building, too, out back towards the lake. I'm going to do that a little bit later. But now let's go check out the rest of downtown Wilton. I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but I hear chimes. I think it's noon. There's music coming from every speaker. All right, what do we have here? Oh, you know, Civil War Memorial. 1861, 1865, 
in honor of the man of Wilton who braved danger. It's like I said, braved dancer. A brave dancer endured hardship and faced death to preserve the nation. Saving the nation from the dancers. If you're on my Patreon, you probably know that I had duck for dinner last night. That's a monument to my dinner. There are about 3,835 people as of the last census here in Wilton, which is down, about a, they've lost about 1,000 since the 80s. Uh, it was up to about 4,700 then. So it's going down, it's been going down for the last several censuses, but still a decent amount of its uh, population still here. And the buildings here are classic main beauty. Honestly, this is about the end of downtown. <laughs> the little main drag. The Luthi building is here. This kind of purple and yellow and pale green. I'm gonna get a view of that from the other side of the street later because that's extremely impressive. But that's about the end of downtown. There are a few shops here, so we'll continue walking further. but. Pretty impressive. The first congregational church. It is Sunday today, by the way, so a lot of stuff is closed. Morning worship and church school, 9.30 a.m., so we've missed that. Ukraine flag and a rainbow flag. Ooh. Ooh. The Church Mouse Thrift Shop open Tuesday and Saturday, 9 to 1. Too bad. But the road trip, any road trip has its own schedule, its own logical, internal logic. So if you get somewhere and something's closed, that's just how it goes. That's what I tell myself. Chaos Coffee Company open. Maceo and I are staying at the Wilson Lake Inn, which is right on the lake. Not right on the water. I haven't seen the water from the uh, hotel, but today's Sunday. And so on Saturday and Sunday only, they have a free waffle breakfast. So we had that this morning. It was good until it destroyed my blood sugar and made me think, okay, no more waffles like that. But anyway, uh, tomorrow they don't have breakfast because it's a weekday, so maybe breakfast tomorrow will be at the Chaos Coffee. So there's the post office, just a big square brick building. Not the most fascinating post office we've seen on here. Here is Food City. Look at the Food City sign. Pretty cool. I like that sort of style of art, that sort of etching style. And it's employee owned, if that's important to you. Probably go there later to get some supplies. <laughs> it's like those t shirts that have like a tuxedo printed on them. Looks nice, but it's all flat. It's not actually a barn. Oddly, this is an actual cat in a fake window. Oh, no, sorry. 
I'll go down as far as that gray building, then we'll turn around and go back on the other side of the road. <laughs> so there was shoe, uh, a shoe factory here. Now there's just beyond shoe repair. Jaywalk real quick here. And back to town. On this side of the road is where the Wilson stream goes. So I think we can get up to it, see it closer up ahead. Oh, right here. Right here. A better look at this uh, Food City sign. I bet that was a lot of fun to design and paint. So I guess this used to be Firehouse Video, now it's a Firehouse Child Care Center. Time marches on. Wow, here we go. Imagine this sound happening in your downtown. The speed limit here on this strip is like 25 miles an hour. I'm starting to think that no one pays any attention to that. Okay, here's some Wilton events here on this little strip of land, which is in fact called McGillicuddy Park. Uh, library book sale, 128 Weld Road, Saturday, 928, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Hey, I recently bought a, a shirt in a thrift store. I didn't have to. There's one right here for free. Clean it up, it'll be all right. But now I don't need a shirt because I just got one, so I'll leave it for the next lucky soul. Look downstream from the bridge. I wonder where Wilton Wilson Wilson Stream goes. I think it goes into a river called Sandy River. Another thing about this trip to Maine here in fall is that I am definitely not a flower and plant guy, but I mean, how can you not notice and be amazed by this. I bet this tree looked different, or this bush, whatever it is. I bet it looked different yesterday, and I bet it'll look different tomorrow. Leaves are changing fast around here. I like all the psychedelic ducks around here. What is this building? Oh, the public library. Wilton Free Public Library, not open on Sundays. Let's go enjoy the sign anyway, because I dig a hand-painted sign.
Okay, here's that building again, the Luffy building. What colors? And that's just bold colors. And for free, some furniture. This would actually kind of be handy for me if it weren't totally disgusting and destroyed. In the hotel room at Wilson uh, Lake Inn, there is a plug under my desk, but my plug just falls out of the outlet. So I uh, had to prop it up with some gear. So it'd be nice to have that uh, power strip maybe. Another intriguing alley. All right, I'm going to cross the road here and walk behind the um, shoe factory. And I think I will do that over here. So there's High Street, which is fair enough because it's up a big steep hill. I'm going to go here on Canal Street. I think this leads behind the um, shoe factory building and I saw a little path where you can walk over a little pedestrian bridge over part of the river, so, or the stream. Let's see if we can do that. So it's cool that the shoe factory was such a big deal here, but my favorite thing about Wilton, and I don't know where it is, I don't know if it's one of these buildings I saw or not, but there was something called, I think the Wilton Woolen Mill or something, and it was the world's first toothpick factory. So if you're eating Maine syrup or Maine lobsters and you get something stuck in your teeth, don't worry. Maine toothpicks are world famous, apparently, at least here in Wilton. Wilton famous. Okay, so now it's called the Bass Wilson Building and it's owned by Cousino, Cousino Properties. Bass Wilson apartment parking. So there's apartments in here. That's what these are. They're not all stores. I guess the first floor is stores and maybe the other floors are apartments. That's a great place to live, I would imagine. There's the walkway. Um, yeah, we'll go this way. pond over here. Well, they got it all. Wilton got, has got it all, compacted into a very small space. Even a picnic table, a bit slanted, but still a picnic table. Between the water, between the pond and the stream. sluice or something. I should not use terms that I don't understand. Some kind of wooden ramp for water. And here's the lake again. This is pretty much where I started the video over there standing by the road. So do kind of a big loop around town and this uh, right here is the town boat launch. If you've got an actual boat or a kayak or a canoe or 
a dinghy or a, a schooner or whatever you got. This is where you go. This morning on the internet, I was trying to find out information about like, the history of this lake. Why is the lake called Wilson and the town called Wilton? I know where the town is called Wilton, but how did the lake get such a similar but different name? And uh, Wikipedia didn't explain it. The town website of Wilton didn't explain it. didn't have a history section, really. And I found a website called Friends of Wilson Lake, and they didn't explain it either. <laughs> so I don't know why it's Wilson versus Wilton. It's one of those things that will remain a mystery. Hopefully somebody in the comments of this video will explain it to me. But here you go. The boat launch and the ill-advised walk along the uneven pier thing here. Okay, the sun is hidden by clouds. Every time it does that, it gets colder here. It's pretty cool today. I've only got this one layer on. But that was the look at Wilton. Um, I think it's a really interesting place with a lot of interesting history. In addition to all of the uh, outdoor activities and, and parks to drive to and places to hike and stuff around here, the town itself has just got a lot of its own unique personality. So I saw fish. I'll try to get a video of a fish swimming for you, a little tiny fish like that. There is, by the way, I understand a lot of good fishing in this lake. Pond, lake, whatever it is. Um, so I'm going to now go find Masayo, who's also wandering around town somewhere, and I'm going to drive uh, in some of the residential streets around Wilton to get a look at some of the actual residential homes and stuff. All of that will be in the extended version of the video, so if you want to watch that, please go to patreon.com slash t1dwanderer and find out how to watch that and all of my extended videos and video diaries and all sorts of stuff over there. Way more about this trip over there. Um, but anyway, for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Go to Patreon to see the rest of the day in Wilton, including a drive around the unique neighborhoods full of attractive and oversized wooden houses and our picnic lunch at a ghost motel surrounded by bright yellow mushrooms only in Wilton. Patreon support helps keep this channel alive so I can bring you videos from fascinating and lesser known destinations like this. Special thanks this week to Calvin Ferreira, Darcy Otranto, David Richley, Lever Wong, Matt Kane, Michael Fedor, Nathaniel Holland, Omaya, Ray Nichols, Samantha, and Will Phillips. Also, thanks to subscribers to my free weekly newsletter. Links are in the video description. Thanks for wandering around with me. Everywhere is worth exploring. The flickering is not a problem with my camera. That's actually what it looks like.